I'd like to tell you about this game, but there's no time to explain. <laughs> In no time to explain, you are just a normal dude hanging about your house having a grand old time when a portal in space-time opens and you are confronted with a futuristic version of you. All he tells you is that There's no time to explain. Then crab. <coughs> From there on out, it's puzzles, 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 baby, till the sun don't shine. Collect hats as you travel from dimension to dimension, fighting against spaceships, running from evil versions of you, and fighting, uh, two dinosaurs with guns riding on the back of another dinosaur, and when they die, one dinosaur becomes a ghost that shoots other dinosaurs out of its mouth. VIDEO GAMES! Now, I'm not a game dev, I'm just a passionate fan, and this game is obviously an ambitious undertaking. I don't mean to demean any of the hard work that went into it when I say this game feels kinda sloppy at points. What's up with the yellow cube in the top corner of the screen here? Why does my mask keep disappearing and reappearing over and over again? Why is the frame rate so bad? Why do these portals launch me into the air? Oh, I guess that just lives here now. Okay, I can't move. I can't move. Oh. Okay, I guess I can move. Oh, I don't think I'm supposed to be able to do this. All right, I guess I'll see you guys later. Yeah, you punched that air to knock me out. That's how we do it in Brooklyn. I'm not from Brooklyn. But these are little things, and they don't affect the core game, which is an incredibly cool puzzle platformer with a lot more variety than I would have thought. For most of the game, it's just you and a laser gun, which helps you jump further and higher. But there are a few variety stages that let you use different mechanics to solve similar puzzles, and they're really fun and refreshing. I mean, look at this. Oh. Oh. Okay, what is that glorious creature? I don't know what it is, but it's got a hamburger for a face. And isn't that really what it's all about? As far as the plot goes, there's nothing really to say. The entire plot of the game is a running gag about how nobody has time to explain the plot. No Time to Explain manages to pull it off by keeping visuals and mechanics fresh and interesting, and not dragging things out. Just when you think you're kind of figuring out what the game is like, BOOM! You're running from an evil version of you and Dr. Robotnik's Eggmobile! And that's actually what it's called, because I... I apparently have nothing better to do with my time than to memorize Sonic the Hedgehog facts. Yay me! Now, despite this game being interesting and pulling off some weird and surprisingly fun ideas, I have some issues with it. One, as previously mentioned, there's a weird frame rate issue I had when playing it. It happened when I was and wasn't recording, windowed mode or not, and it really ended up making the game feel kinda clunky. And two, there are boss fights where nothing matters. Like, check this out. I shoot the bad guys yet to make him die. We clear on that? Okay? Okay. But look, he can't kill me! I turn red and I can't shoot my laser for a second and then I'm fine again and blasting away like that one orc from Lord of the Rings. This isn't an isolated issue. My natural impulse as somebody who grew up playing video games is to dodge the explosions and to shoot the bad guys without getting hit. But once I realized that Sharktopus here couldn't actually kill me, it made this otherwise silly boss battle just kinda boring. Some bosses can kill, but it's weird because you're dodging a dude's attacks like, OH NO! NOT MY BOT! NOT MY BOT! NOT MY- OH! It doesn't hurt me. Okay. I wanna make it clear, I'm not bashing on these guys. This game was an ambitious undertaking for a first ever full game project. It was based on Tom Bryan's successful Flash game of the same name. And after a successful Kickstarter, Tom Bryan and Alex... Nietzsche Purchik. Nietzsche. Nietzsche Purchak. Alex, whose last name is unimportant, launched a full game and started their own company, Tiny Build Games, which would go on to publish one of my favorite party games of all time, Speedrunners, which if you haven't played it, get some friends and USB controllers and do it. It's awesome. And if you don't have any friends, then why don't you come on down to William Tedworth's Friend Shop Emporium and Massage Parlor, conveniently located behind that one place at that one town somewhere. We have magic friends, sexy friends, friends that smell like feet. Gross. Do you have any girlfriends? No, you silly, pathetic, worthless little- William Tedworth's Friend Shop Emporium. Technically, not slavery. Despite all my misgivings, No Time to Explain was a fun, albeit weird, platformer which offered me a chance to play around with some fun concepts and to fight dinosaur ghosts. It's available on Steam for about $5 US and it's about 2-3 to three hours to play through. But there is a level creator, so theoretically infinite fun. If you aren't sure from what you've seen if the game is for you, go try the Flash game and if you like, pick up the full version. Everybody wins! It's available on Windows, Mac, and Linux on Steam, so go give it a look and a little kiss on the cheek just to show that you really care. 
Hey guys and welcome to the end of the video. You have done well to get this far. As a reward for your courage, friendliness, bravery, and pretty face, you can have another video. That, that's weird, when I, when I clap my hands it's supposed to, oh, uh, there, there it goes. If you really enjoyed yourself, like, comment, and subscribe. It makes my heart sing like a thousand angels, or like one really good singing angel. Maybe that. And if you really, really enjoyed yourself, you can follow me on Twitter over here, on Twitch over here, or even click on this lovely little stream highlight video up here. It's just, it's so cute. Aren't you just the best? Seriously though, guys, thank you for watching. This has been Best for a Buck. Uh, I'll see you next time.